All right, kia ora team, and welcome to episode 29 of Yarns with Beef and Matt, brought to you by Alice Katie and Frog Grips. I'm Beef. I'm Matt. And joining us today is another young gun coming out of Western Australia, is another up and comer, uh, a name to keep your eye on, it's Zane Healy. How are you, brother? Good, guys. How are you going? Good, man. Good. Just woken up? Yeah, not too long ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How good. Um, you're not an early morning trainer or you're heading to the gym now? after this no nah, i'm always around like nine o'clock i usually get to the gym in the mornings yeah. um it's just never been a never been a thing yeah um here's a question i've asked okay you get to the gym how long are you warming up for before you start hooking into it um so we usually hit like a go wad so mm. like or just like a stretch for probably like 15 20 minutes or so and then we'll kind of depending on what we're doing just kind of get the heart rate up um, if we're doing our mono session in the morning. Um, and then right, if it's in the afternoon, it's kind of just opening your body up for whatever lifting we've got. So it's probably like, yeah, probably 30 to 35 minutes generally, yeah. <laughs> which is like a long time. How good, how good. Yeah. Um, all right, let's dive into this. So you've obviously watched Gracie's. Um, we're going to throw it back. The young Zane, the younger Zane than he is now. We're talking like high school. What was he up to? Take us back. What's your story, bro? Wow. Um, yeah, so all through my junior years, um, basically, well, from when I was like six years old, I was just playing AFL. Um, oh, nice. So until I was 18, um, 19. Uh, so I was playing just kind of all through juniors and then moved up into like the Waffle, um, is what we have in Australia, uh, Western Australia, which is like the West Australian Football League. Mm-hmm. So I was just playing the Subiaco um, <clears throat> from when I was like, well, I was playing for Claremont, one of the clubs, which is in Perth. And then I, I transferred to another club from when I was like 16 until I was about 21 or 20 when I stopped playing there. So um, I was just running the mark playing footy for those yeah. guys. I had aspirations of, you know, making the AFL when I was a little bit younger. Um, but a few injuries here and there um, wasn't kind of w- w- going to happen anymore, I guess. So yeah. Yeah. Um, just kind of continued playing. But also, um, yeah, I was just enjoying it kind of that was the reason that i was doing it in the end and then kind of yeah fell out of love with it a little bit how um how competitive is afl over there obviously we don't get it at all here yeah it's very um yeah so you've got to kind of start from when you're a little bit younger and then you kind of go through the go through the system Mm. so i was playing like the state teams from like uh state 12s and state 15s and then i kind of got lost in the system a little bit just with the injuries and um wasn't able to kind of progress through there. So um, just continued to play for my, yeah, the state, the state league um, until I was 20. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, how good, man. Yeah. Um, no, so you go. Oh, the, um, yeah. So, sorry. You, how far, how far toward your goal of getting to the AFL did you get? Like how far along did you get? So it's generally like you're going to play the 12s, 15s, 16s, and then you make like the state 18s camp, which is just before the draft. So I just didn't quite make the 16s just because I had a real bad back back injury when I was in the 15s. And then it's super hard to kind of break through into a barrier um, a little bit later on, unless you're like an absolute superstar kind of mature age recruit. So um, yeah, I was just, I had aspirations when I was younger and then just kind of let them, um, fizzle a little bit and just continue playing in like the highest league that we had um, in our yeah in our state I guess so yeah. oh nice what's the sort of like um, the like weekend league for AFL like is is it like the same here yeah. where I can just go play rugby for a club type thing nah so it's pretty you've got to do like tryouts in the preseason so it starts oh, with like a couple hundred like 100, 100, probably 150, 200 guys who just all come down um, and then it gets cut down to like the the squad of like 60 and then you've got like the league team and you've got the reserves team. So I was just in the reserves team because I was a little bit younger and working my way up. Um, and then, yeah, in the 20 season, did my ACL. Um, so that was kind of what put a put a stop yeah. to my footy. Yeah. Oh, no. Shit. Yeah, that's, that's super competitive, eh? Because like over here... Mm. I don't know if it's the same in Aussie, but over here, like you can, like you don't even have to train. You can just show up on a Saturday with some boots and <laughs> get on the field and have a crack. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. that that would be what our like our normal. Um, so you've got like our amateur clubs, which you can just go play for any right. team, and then you've got obviously the the little bit higher club is probably what you've got one under the NRL, I guess. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's there's, there's definitely levels levels yeah. to the game. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it'd be like doing a 
an intermediate CrossFit comp compared to like an RX CrossFit right. or like begin, beginners. Yeah, yeah. It's um, yeah, it's crazy. Like something we we don't even think about. Like AFL, how big it is in Australia, but like outside of Australia, it's just like we we don't even get it on TV here. Like yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, non-existent. Mm. <laughs> so 2020, you tore your ASL ACL. Is that what you said? Yeah. So like preseason of 2020, I um, I might even be preseason of 2019. I uh, had like a partial tear in my ACL uh, just in the preseason. So we were just doing like match sim was literally like a week before round one. Um, just took like a misstep trying to step back on someone and just kind of went eh, eh, ass over. Um, mm. So had a few months out at the start of that season, just kind of um, trying to repair it. You don't need to get surgery. So you can kind of just go through the gym process because it wasn't a full tear. Mm. Um so I just did it that way as a doctor was like, you don't really need an ACL reconstruction right now. And then I came back to playing footy about midway through the season. Um, and then apparently it just kept wearing down and wearing down. And about into the into the 2020 season, so the following one, it, I basically was just feeling really uh, unstable through my knee. Mm. Um, and I actually went out to go get my meniscus checked. And then the same surgeon was like, yeah, look, the ACL is basically hanging by thread as well oh, now. Shit. So, um, yeah, made the call just to get my get a full reconstruction. Then um, I think it was like August of 2020. So, mm. shit, what's that? That's like six months rehab, six to eight months rehab. No, like twelve. Wow. To be like to yeah, so probably I probably haven't felt a hundred percent until like maybe like a year ago. So mm. it's probably about two two and a half years till you're starting to feel really really good, but. Um, yeah, it takes a little while to kind of get going just with the, the squatting and then slowly building up weight. But I tried to get into it pretty quickly, as you can imagine. Mm-hmm. Can't really sit still. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so where along the journey did CrossFit come in the picture? Mm, so I um I done my cert three and cert four in fitness straight out of, basically out of school. So I had a year off the um, just kind of working after school would take a little bit of time off. And then when I did my cert three and cert four at TAFE, um, and then from there, one of my good mates, he, um, he knew the owner of a CrossFit gym that had just basically opened up. It wasn't a CrossFit affiliate. It was a functional fitness gym. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and he goes, look, uh, he needs, uh, he needs a coach basically. So he's just starting up and he's opening it up. So there was like a CrossFit Perth and that was like our, um, a massive gym in Perth. And then the owner of my gym kind of had separated himself off and just opened up his own little, um, a little functional fitness place nice. um and that was basically where i started coaching and basically learned about crossfit um so yeah i was coaching at that gym from midway of 2019 um and then yeah so that was where my first introduction of crossfit was i guess so i was basically coaching it doing with my level one without ever done yeah. it, doing it so <laughs> so you go from like a set three set four in uh, what was what was the actual was it sports science just or? fit in, fit, in, in fitness, fitness. Right. yeah yeah so you basically just personal training or coaching yeah okay um not many people go to crossfit for their first coaching gig what was that like for you were you more of a purist like bro stop kipping or were you pretty open to the idea of the functional movement I still wasn't even like fully aware it took a lot of coaching from um my boss who was like teaching me crossfit kind of down the way so the gym wasn't like a super competitive one it was more just for that you know average gym goer who you know might just come in and stumble across a crossfit box and then they they, they're doing crossfit without even realizing it you know so like oh we're doing these box jumps but what are these snatches what are these clean and jerks so by no means was i like a super professional or understood like all of the movements it took a lot of years for me to kind of start getting that understanding Mm. Mm. <clears throat> um to take it back just a little bit um it sounds mm. like you've you've found crossfit fairly organically it's not like something you were hyper fixated on for a long time but it does yeah. sound like afl was a huge part of your life prior to was it was it hard to walk away from sort of that era of your life no 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 so yeah it was a really seamless transition it was really weird as well but oh, nice. basically i was still playing afl um, all the way through me coaching until that until 2020 until after I did my knee and then uh, basically so I had my reconstruction in August of 2020 and then 
in January or December, I was basically like, I'm not going back to football and I'm going to start CrossFit. So I'd already been back in the gym, like just doing bodybuilding and all my rehab. Mm. And then literally like January 1st or 2nd, I just started like programming for myself. It was so, it was so strange because those months that I'd been in bed, I was just watching all the CrossFit documentaries because I was like, oh, maybe I should learn a little bit more about what I'm, what I'm kind of yeah. coaching here as well. But also I just found it really interesting. And then I basically just didn't even go back to the preseason, just put a full stop in it and yeah, went yeah. straight, jumped into it. Fair enough. Do you think the injury had the biggest part to play or were you already pretty, pretty signed off? Cause you've been doing it for a long time at that stage. Yeah, I probably like, I still loved watching it and still playing it, but mm. probably the atmosphere and the environment, it just, as you get into the, I guess the waffle and stuff, there's a lot of like, little clicks because their older boys have been there for so long and then there's the younger guys coming through so it is really hard to break through and it probably just wasn't an environment i was thriving in anymore and at that 20 years of age you you're really trying to figure out what you want to do you know it's like out of school it's like all good and then that 20 to kind of 22 23 you're like shit i'm trying to figure out what i want to do here and i just wasn't wasn't loving it anymore so mm. yeah i think that's um that's a good point because of what's going on like in the CrossFit space now, so you've got like your Mel O'Briens and that, um, you know, and everyone's freaking out because she's not competing again this season and everyone's freaking yeah. out going, oh, you know. But if you've been doing it for so long, it doesn't matter what sport it is and I think because everyone's so involved in CrossFit. I mean, Emily DeRoy came on here and she was like, fuck, she swam for fucking years and then one day it was like, just get me out of this swimming pool type thing, you know what yeah. I mean? And I think you hit the nail on the head there. You get to that, that age, you know, 19, 20, 21, and you're sort of like, fuck, I don't know what to do anymore. I don't want to do that anymore. So, yeah, um, that's good. It's good you brought that up, bro, because it, it happens in all sports. So, that's me, bro. Yeah, and it happens, happens really quickly as well. So, yeah, um, we kind of just figure it out. So, yeah, let's let's take it forward. So, 2021, I've got you doing your first Open. Um, that's yep. pretty fresh from the reconstruction, sort of off the rehab. Yeah, it was probably like, so August. Yeah, probably like seven, seven months eight months yeah. um so look, i hadn't got any movements down like movement quality was at an all-time low i was basically just trying to get strength back i was lo- learning all these movements on my own so mm. yeah first um, open was early yeah it, you still managed to place pretty well i mean not enough to go go through but um yeah still, oh, i actually still, went through the quarters yeah quarters sorry yeah that's what i mean you oh, got yeah, the quarters and yeah, yeah, um but yeah. i mean fucking like eight months after a reconstruction bro to, to even make quarters that's it's pretty impressive um and it's your first sort of crack at it too at the open um yeah did that sort of cement that you're like nah like this is this is my jam next year it's all on from the start honestly like in january because i was literally just doing all the workouts at a globo gym basically um or and then also where I was working, but I was just writing all these workouts out from that kind of first day I started. I, it was like a super, I mean, unrealistic goal, but I was like, yeah, this is just what I want to do. And I was like, I'm putting everything into it kind of thing. So I'd be writing them all down into my notes, like looking at different workouts I could do, just making them up mm. um, before I started on my first program. But yeah, I basically just dove, dove straight in the deep end. So mm. Mean, mean. That's good, man. Um, I think I think Grace might have mentioned it, but the the CrossFit scene in Perth is it? It's not that big. Um, so where did you start out? Was it Dignus? So I started actually like just doing my classes. So at the at the gym that I was up, um, it was called Way Too Fit. So as I said, it was just like a functional fitness gym, um, and then they would basically have um, so your, your normal classes in the morning and the afternoon, but you'd have yeah, either strength or conditioning you could choose to do in the first half of the session yeah. and then your Metcon or your WOD as the as everyone would do in the class. So basically I would do um, the strength and the Metcon and then the, I would do the next class straight away and I would do the conditioning and the Metcon. So I would do the same workout twice in a day oh, <laughs> and then I would also get strength and then I would also get conditioning. So it was um, that was only for a couple of weeks before I, I jumped onto Proven um basically yeah. just pretty early just because you know the hype around it but mm. yeah that was basically what i started out and people were like what are you doing and i was like bro i'm taking this far like this is yeah. gonna go well and they're all like yeah. laughing at me doing these classes and stuff but i was like whatever 
yeah yeah that, that's keen bro that's real keen <laughs> but yeah, um, it, was, it was mental yeah yourself and grace definitely ripping it for for perth and western australia but i did see that you were over um training in ricky's gym for for a period of time there how how was that for your growth and just being around other super high level competitive athletes like we just see him and michelle like just so close to us now so like we don't even I mean, when you first kind of met Ricky, when he came over to Perth, he did a camp at Dignus and that was when we really met him. And you might be a little bit, oh, like, shit, like it's Ricky kind of thing, like a um, little bit starstruck in a way. Um, but, like, the relationship we've built with him, it's it just feels like training with each other kind of thing now. So, mm. I mean, he is ab- absolutely incredible. Um, mm. There's, you know, there's no doubt about that. But the times we've been over there, the first time he had a full shoulder reconstruction, like the week before we went to go train with him for the month, yeah um so michelle says that we really helped him kind of with that rehab as well though because that first month is probably the hardest after your surgery so he would still come in the gym with us every day and just watch or do what he could do and then um following up on that just before down under this year i think i was on right yeah just before down under this year um it was awesome to throw down against him because he doesn't he's at this point where he's so good now that he can kind of do any workout and it'll make him better yeah. Or, you know, he, he can only get so good now. So, um, yeah, he, he would just jump into our workouts or we would jump into his and just try and grow from each other. Yeah. Is there, is there conversations going on? Because I imagine he's um, – obviously, he's a fit dude, but that the the mindset on him, like obviously going through all the, um, you know, the four-year ban and that kind of stuff, also having the shoulder reconstruction, the dude's got to have a, a pretty concrete mind on him to like be able to push through this and still be performing at that level. Um, yeah, what's the sort of conversations you guys are having around like that kind of area? Man, he's not he's not that um, like he he's so relaxed, bro. It's yeah. ridiculous to me. Like <laughs> I said, oh, it's and I it's because maybe he's doing it for so long, but just the way he goes about, it, he's so nonchalant, like very chill with it. Like when he's training, he's on, and when he's mm. lifting, he's on. And you can see that kind of switch that he has. But when we're not at the gym, like he doesn't really like talk. We don't talk about it that much or, and he's kind of put that all in the past and he just knows what he wants now. Yeah. Um, And he doesn't let anything what anyone says kind of affect him. And that's kind of, I mean, I've taken a bit of a a chip from that and, you know, you can't really worry about what anyone else is going to say. But yeah, it's quite more just talking about workouts and strategies and things, but yeah, when, when he's at home, he doesn't, it's kind of like home time, you know? Yeah. Oh, fair enough. And that's probably part of it, you know, just, switching off not letting anything get in yeah um you know don't even address it type no. thing. so that's no, good it's good um so you did down under was that the last comp you've done yeah uh yeah that you was the last yeah that was the last one you yeah. went at waterpalooza you didn't compete at no i did no. Oh, i went to waterpalooza to go help out with grace yeah no i didn't no i didn't do the qualifiers i'm pretty sure the waterpalooza qualifiers were like the week after the down under ones and i was like just not going to happen kind of thing so <laughs> sweet ass that's a crazy yeah. off-season schedule man seriously yeah. you guys are going there's, yeah. there's just no such thing as an off-season anymore because because all the big comps nah. now go sweet game season is over and then it's just fucking bang 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 every fucking weekend you got these like big hitters so i nah, mean yeah it's choose. pretty full on but mm. yeah i probably should have done it i i think i could have made it this year um even into the RX field, um, mm. but it just wasn't worth it. I was just going to support Gray, so. Yeah. Yeah. Fair yeah. play, fair play. Um, last year was your first year at the pro semifinals. Was that calculated? Is that where you wanted to be? Was that planned? Or was, Yep. It was. Um, how was the pro for you? What was the experience like? Yeah, I had expectations to be there last year. Um, so obviously the first year you're talking about the Open mm. um, that I ever did in 2021, I actually flew over to Brisbane on my own after doing CrossFit for four months just to go watch the Pro, sure. um, just to kind of understand what the whole thing was about. Like it was it was crazy. It was basically, when was it? It was April when I was like, Dad, like I just want to fly over there and just go watch it myself. So I literally mm. just went to Brisbane for five or six days, went trained at CrossFit Tour and just watched it myself. Yeah. Um, and then the following year was Grace's first year, mm. um, and I really wanted to be there. But then also doing the quarterfinals workouts, I was kind. Of, I kind of said to myself, like, I could kind of feel that it wasn't wasn't my time yet. Um, 
And then, yeah, last year I felt as good as I'd ever felt, obviously. The more time you do it, the better you get. And, yeah, it, it was definitely the, the year that I had kind of projected myself to be there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, to plan in that aspect. What was the expectation going to the Pro Club? You, you took 14th. Um, did you go in yeah. thinking, look, this is a crack? Or did you think top 10? What, what were you thinking there? I qualified sixth, so that was a super big, like, that was a bit of a shock. Not a shock, but, like, every day, like, you wake up at, you can't sleep during the night of quarterfinals, and you wake up, like, 4 a.m., you check the leaderboard, wait till it's, like, being updated, and I just was, kept staying in that kind of top six, top eight. So, I wanted to stay in the top heat. I also knew I was going to take massive hits on the snatch, um, and that was just what was always going to happen just because of... Um, you know, my strength is still coming up. But then I just made a lot of little errors here and there, which probably cost me a top 10, top eight, which I probably shouldn't have made. Um, but yeah, there wasn't any major goals. It was definitely to finish in that top half though. So um, yeah, I mean, I can't complain with the 14th, uh, you know, a couple of years in. Oh, shit, no. I mean, it's everyone, it's some people's only goal is to get to Torian once, you know? So yeah, no, that's yeah. good, man. Um, you're still young as well. And if we look forward to this season... What are we now? February now? Um, February 15th, 16th. Um, what's your training look like now? Obviously, the Open is just about here. I know you guys don't take it too seriously, but it is obviously a step to get to yeah. the games. Uh, so what's your training looking like now? Yeah, it's um, it's getting pretty full on. So we've started, um, we're both on Kiefer Lamy's programming now for Underdogs Athletics. Right. Um, so we're both on individual and this is this is week three um and it's it's been a well, week three for me anyway she's been on it since we've been we were in vegas but yeah it's been a the volume is hot i'd probably say higher um but just it's more the loads that you're moving the overall load load that you're moving and the overall gymnastics volume is a lot more um and just the way he programs things so it's definitely starting to step up and i think next week we're having a little bit of a deload so it'll be um much needed but yeah he's basically buried us for the last three weeks to kind of get us ready <laughs> yeah Fuck, fair enough yeah. fair play fair yeah. play um looking ahead looking even further i know it's not uh, a given but looking at tori yeah. and if you were to make tori in this year is there any sort of expectations or goals in mind like i think i'm i think that with right execution and things i can be in that top five top six yeah um I think what I've shown to myself and the growth over the last year um, has been like exponential. It's like massive. I look at videos from a year ago and I don't even look like the same person. Like I've had to work really, really hard to get to the spot I'm at now. And um, with down under, like I've, I learned so much at that comp as well. And it's just like every big one I'm going to, I'm learning more and more. And I felt really at home at down under this year. Um, I still made a few errors here and there where I, and they're really small things. So I feel like each big one I go to, the errors are getting smaller. Mm. Um, so, you know, you always want to train and compete as if you're fighting for that gain spot, but you also got to be a little bit more, a little bit realistic with it. But so I definitely think there's places where I can take points off those, you know, top three guys. Mm. Um, but there'll also be places where, you know, I'll, I'll be middle of the pack to, you know, the 20th. Yeah, I'll probably say about 20th now. Yeah, fair enough. And just looking at the field, like it's um, like I still – now look at the field you i i was like oh khan's gone james is gone royce is gone but then you're like now like even they are going to struggle if they were even in there like i don't know i think ba i don't know if baden brown's coming back but if he's back fuck that man's on a mission <laughs> um bailey martin peter ellis um big man jake douglas you know will kearney even like all these names coming up now and you can't help but like think you, we've only got three spots how much do you play if at all into like I don't even know how to word this, but like what they're doing compared to what you're doing or is it more just like if I just stay focused, make sure that I keep all my mistakes to a minimum and just like keep that other shit out. Yeah, what what what's the mindset there, I guess? I mean, I think my only real hole is like my top end strength. Mm. Um, and I know that's going to be coming with years, like even in the last six months and even since working with Kiefer in the last month, like there's mm. been there's been growth there anyway. So I know that's going to be the thing to keep coming up and I can't worry about what anyone else is doing. You know, everyone's snatching 285, 295 now. So I know that that's going to come with years um, and with time. So there's no point in me trying to even worry about the field, but I know everywhere else I'm just as willing to hurt as anyone else. Um, 
I know what I do in training every day. Like I even say to Grace, I'm like, it's, it's hard to imagine other people working as hard as you because you're not with them. Mm. But like what we put ourselves through and, you know, we're on the floor after every single workout. And if you're not, you know, and I know that's how hard we're pushing. And you see some people who kind of go through the motions and sure they're a little bit hunched over and they're breathing hard, but did they really put everything into that workout where I know what, what, in Grace, what Grace and I are doing? It's like, yeah, there are no questions in my head if I'm working hard enough. Yeah. So oh, um, it would just be a matter of time, I think, for me to keep catching some of the guys at the top. Oh, good. Awesome, bro. That, that, that's, uh, that's definitely an awesome mindset to have. Um, there, w- there was a podcast going around with Matt Fraser and he was talking about how there's really only so much gain you can get out of training so hard. Like everybody's going to the gym, everybody's training really hard. It's the stuff you do outside that's hopefully going to take you to the next level. How much um, do you prioritize your recovery? Yeah, so, man, I say, like, I get made fun of, but <laughs> I like the guys at the gym, but literally, like, my whole life is CrossFit. Like, it's it's pretty ridiculous now. So, recently, um, I've, like, le- I was working a Nike retail job, um, and I'm, I'm not working at Nike anymore, so I'm basically just full-time training. Right. Um, so, less, yeah. So, but even before then, you know, um, in the mornings, you know, we're getting our nutrition rights. So we both work with a nutritionist. Um, I'm doing all my stretching before, all my stretching after the session or rolling out, um, making sure we feel right through the day. But then at night time, I stretch for an hour a night. So um, just to make sure that my body feels, because I'm not, you know, with my knee and with a few other things, like I'm not the most mobile. So I've had to work really hard at getting that body right. Um, so yeah, I'll, st- I'll stretch for an hour a night, you know, just while watching telly. Um, and then we'll make sure in our recovery days that, you know, sauna, ice bath, you know, massage, all the little things. Um, cause I know that already those things that we've been doing have made such big differences compared to other people. Mm. Oh, and you even see it. Yeah. You even see it down under, um, it's like the year before, in 2021, I finished, oh, sorry, 2022, I finished 21st and it was like the leap I made on some of the guys who I was right around in one year. Like they can't even touch me now kind of thing is how I want to, I want to look at it each time I go to a new, a new comp. It's like those guys that I was around last year, I don't want them to be anywhere near me. So if they're not going to be doing the little things like I am, then yeah, they shouldn't be in that position. Yeah. That's, it's good. You say that like, um, we had Bailey on and I remember him saying, you know, he, he just relied on his fitness and it's the same mindset as yours. Um, but he didn't quite, he didn't really say that oh, I don't want people near me where well, he turned, he dominated one year and then the next year he was getting dominated and he was like, fuck, I was like, I was beating them last year. And then it took him that realization. So it's fucking sick that you're sort of already saying that like now, nah, like next year, no one's touching me. I'll take this stuff more seriously, which um, if you look back, like where Khan on, he reckons that held him back from ever sort of doing any damage at the games. Yeah. Like what does he yeah. reckon? His first year of the games, he got on the piss in New York city the weekend before. You know what I mean? Like so, yeah. Uh, you know, hats off to you, man. And and also training with Grace has got to be pretty pretty good. Like two high competitive athletes. Um, how's that dynamic? I know we touched on it with her, but what's your thoughts on the dynamic yeah. there? Yeah. So I mean, we're we're there to train. You know, it's basically nothing else. We have our own strengths and our own weaknesses. So um, obviously, with the individual programming, we do a lot of our workouts together. So some things might be tweaked, um, but a majority of the workouts we are doing are pretty similar. Um, and it's just good to go head to head. You know, sometimes she'll smack me. Sometimes, yeah. you know, it'll be it'll be vice versa the other way around. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the time we're right on each other's heels. Um, and that's what we need. You know, not every day you want to be like versing someone because it's probably not healthy. Yeah. Um, so like obviously with the conditioning pieces, you know, we're not doing that to push each other. We're doing that to make ourselves better. Yeah. But with workouts, it's good to have little pushes here or, have one-to-one rest in workouts. We can kind of work together on things and um, yeah, pushing in that aspect, you know, when you both have the same goals, it's really easy. Um, and I just want what's like best for her. So, you know, it's, it's hard for her to listen to me compared to like, listen to Keith or I say Costa um, because we're kind of wearing the same boat. So I try not to give her too much advice anymore. And I kind of just let her do her own thing. Um yeah, she'll yeah, she's on, she'll be unstoppable this year if she um if she's healthy and if she continues on the the trajectory she's on. I think. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's really awesome that you guys have that dynamic and you have that partnership because I mean the amount of uh, commitment and sacrifice that you guys have to make to perform at the level that you do it's it's got to be nice to not have to walk that path alone you know so um, it's really cool that you guys have got the you know the same goals you're headed the same way so uh, it's that's fucking sweet man it's good yeah 100%. yeah. I think grace doesn't even say it's a sacrifice anymore. Like it's a choice, you know, yeah. like when we're, we're not sacrificing a lot of people are like, Oh yeah, I'm training. I'm sacrificing going out on weekends or, you know, not enjoying this and that. And it's like, well, not really. It's not a sacrifice for us. Cause it's, you know, what we want to do. Um, and we've made that choice deliberately. So. Although I will say there is one sacrifice. She's having to do a lot of washing, bro. <laughs> 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 yeah. she, she thinks she's doing a lot of washing. Yeah. Oh, too much defend yourself bro what's going on <laughs> we, we we cracked up nah. when um we heard you in the background um yeah H- how many loads of washing are you doing Zach? oh i came home at the right time yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. she says three a day and i'm like i don't even wear three outfits a day so how am i going to be doing that much washing but oh. no nah, i get i get pretty hot especially now it's been you know 40 41 for the you know Ooh. anywhere from 35 to 41 for the last couple of weeks here so it's been a, a hot That's box nice. in our in our gym it's cooling down a little bit now, but um, yeah, it hasn't been a good few weeks. It's been wet by the time you walk in. So. Yeah, fuck that. That's, that's <laughs> silly heat, man. That's silly heat. I'm not super big yeah. on ice bars, but I'd probably live in one if I was in yeah. Perth. Yeah, yeah, we definitely, that's one thing that we don't have. So we've got our sauna here and I'm like, I don't even need a fucking yeah. sauna. I'm in the sauna <laughs> all day. So we need an ice bath here for sure. Um, just talking about your area, because um, I touched on this with Grace and she was way too fucking tough for me, but... The, the, like spiders and shit in your area. I know Perth's bad for it. You see much Perth? of it? Yeah. Isn't... Oh, nah. fuck, have I got my areas wrong? Where is Perth? Western no, Florida? no. It probably, is, it probably yeah. is bad. It is bad. But yeah. we just don't... We, no, nah, we don't see a lot of them. I mean, along the coast, like, um, there'll be like snakes and stuff. But you don't... I mean, we don't see them or anything. But... It's fucked, man. be a sp- spider here and there. I don't know how you do it. Just cro- I just imagine <laughs> Perth is like... Well, it's anywhere in Australia. Just crocodiles walking down the main street. It's all I see. <laughs> it's not the northern. It's not the northern territory. All right. Oh, it's, it, that, that's where it is. Okay, we'll stay. We'll stay. Yeah. Right there. All right, see. All right. Um. But yeah, down under last year. How would you find down under? How's the weekend? For I you? mean, I loved it. Yeah, I, I loved it. So we had a really good month training with Rick and stuff, and staying over there. Mm. Um. So we basically just lived with Ricky and Michelle for the whole month leading up, and just enjoyed ourselves and trained hard. Mm. Um. I didn't really know what the expectations were after fin- I think I finished third in the qualifiers. So the, actually the podium from down under was the qualifier podium anyway. Yeah, so true. Yeah. it was, it was, it was the same. I looked, I saw that. I remember that the other day, but um, yeah, I, I loved it. It was a, it was a really good experience. I felt a lot more at home than I did at Torian. I'd put on, you know, a lot of it, um, confidence in myself over the, the six months from Torian to then I knew how much better I'd already gotten. Um, and I just knew that, you know, I had to just minimize mistakes and there were some really small shitty things that, you know, piss, piss you, piss you off after the event. Yeah. But, um, overall, I kind of knew where I had to be in the last event to, to kind of get on that podium. And it was, it was a really good mental battle to kind of just grind it out along the boys to, mm. to make sure I was there. Yeah. That's for sure, man. That's good stuff. Because obviously um, a lot of the bigger guys weren't there, but you know, you can only compete against who you versus who you compete against. So Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, we saw heaps of bits and pieces on uh social media and that. There's there's one one post that kind of blew up and it springs to mind. There's one of you, you got your hands on your head and you're watching <laughs> and then yeah, you know, you're clearly yeah. gutted. What what's happening in that moment, bro? Um, so basically it was I already knew, so Grace had a bit of an injury like after the overhead squat workout, her elbow was just flaring up and we were basically deciding whether or not she should even be competing this weekend for her like overall goals for the next season and going into Wadapalooza and stuff. So I already knew that it was going to be tough on those kettlebell snatches. Um, And then with the handstand walking as well, it it was just really hurting to kind of press out. Um, So it was just basically her Annika Greer and I think Kringle um, all on the final slalom handstand walk, and I think she just hit the hit the um, one of the slaloms and just had to go back yeah. right as she was about to pass those girls. And you know, I get just as um, just as invested in her competing as I get invested in my competing. So it was a little moment there. Yeah, yeah, for, full of emotion for sure. How 
at comps and, and high, you know, tense moments like that, because there's a lot of buy-in from you guys, how do you manage your emotions and stay composed, whether it's for your own performance, for Grace? How, how do you manage your emotions on comp days? I'm getting a lot better at it now. It's kind of just forgetting that the crowd's there kind of thing, and you've just got to mm. kind of compete how you train, if you train hard enough, you know. Um, so that's kind of the mindset that I have with her. I find it really hard to restrain myself and I need to get better at that because I probably waste a lot of energy, yeah. um, cheering, cheering for her <laughs> and, you know, mm. stressing about how she's going. Um, so I probably need to try and pull that back a little bit and just know that she's going to do her thing either way. Um, but yeah, in terms of managing emotions, I think once you've done it a couple of times, like you kind of get used to it. I mean, you would see the guys that, I mean, the best guys at touring and the best guys at the games, they wouldn't even know that there's a crowd there, you know? So I think it's just about trying to subdue it and just go about your business. Yeah. No, fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Kiefer, that's underdogs. Eh? I got that right. Yeah. So yeah. That's yeah. that t-shirt you're wearing now. Eh? Yeah. That's, yes. Yeah. Dog. Yeah. This is, this is his. He gave me a few. <laughs> Big dogs. Um, I got a, I got a question. Um, I, I've asked a few people this as well. What's your thoughts on, because you've you've said before that you've you've trained with other people and that um, going to like a big underdogs camp, you know, where you, everyone there is pretty much everyone you're competing against. Do you love that environment? Do you think there's a place for it, or is it not for you? Um, so there's not really any guys over there. Hey, mm. sorry, can you hear that? Yeah, it's fine. You can hear the messages coming through. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, all just, it's all good. Though. Oh, okay. Sure it's fine. All right, good. <laughs> nah, it's because Grace and Michelle are going crazy on it. <laughs> um, <laughs> fucking hell. Yeah, no, you're um, yeah awesome. legit mute the chat. Um, <laughs> yeah, so going over there, there weren't actually any guys in Vegas. Um, really, well, I mean, there were no semi final athletes, there were no games athletes over there. I mean, there was Raf, who's a um, a games teens athlete, um, Ali Scud's boyfriend. Yeah. But apart from that, it was just all the girls kind of going against each other. So. I'm not sure what Grace's 100% thoughts on it was against the girls. I think sometimes she finds it helpful to get pushed um, by her competitors. And then other times I think it's healthy to kind of stay out of that environment where you're getting pushed, 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 pushed every day and competing against me where she knows that she's not competing against me on the comp floor. It's like a little bit more assuring maybe on the, on the mind. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of me, I've never really had like a, a training camp, so I can't um, I can't really speak for, for myself there. I'm not 100% sure. I've had training partners and it is good to push, but I feel like, yeah, you always you don't want to ever be the best in the room. So yeah. I feel like when we trained with Ricky, it was really, really helpful for me because yeah, I was humbled. getting that little bit more. Yeah, yeah. But again, you don't want to be humbled all the time because if you get humbled all the time, you know, it's detrimental even though i know he's one of the best in the world but yeah. um yeah i think there's there's highs and lows to both yeah i yeah 100 percent right 100 percent right like you need that competitive nature but if it's there all the time you're 100 on one i mean the risk of injury goes up because you, you are competitive people by nature so even when people say oh, i'm gonna take this easy there's always that fucking two percent in your brain right. going now nah, fuck, fuck i'm gonna be yeah yeah <laughs> Like it's fucking yeah, so, oh, yeah, today I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, okay, I'm yeah. sure you don't. Then you come out red hot in the first fucking round. Yeah, I was, I was fucking, honestly, I put you and Peter Ellis in like this real, I shouldn't because you're completely different athletes. <laughs> but it's like, just because you're both Australian and young. But yeah. it's like, I just imagine you two in a workout would be fucking on, man. I imagine like if either of you would be like, nah, I'm not going to take this easy. I'd be like, fucking bullshit. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, I think, um, I think with Pete, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a good next couple of years. I think he's had six years. I mean, from what I've been hearing, he's had six years in the sport. I've only had like, you know, this will be three and a half. Oh yeah. Coming into my fourth year now. Um, I think, yeah, we're going to have some good battles over these next couple of years. And um, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be pretty good. Even with Zach Thomas, like when we were training over in Wollongong with Ricky, um, we got to train with Zach Heats and we're pretty close with Zach. So I think this next, um, this next wave of boys is going to be super yeah. exciting over these next, you know, three four years like you chuck in bailey and then it's like you got your four sort of you know pretty young and newcomers but then jay he's young but he's been there forever so it's like yeah you know, I, I didn't even realize jay was like i think he's 25 i think he's younger than that isn't he like 24 i think yeah. he's a year older than me yeah 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 it's, it's crazy yeah maturity when you've had that that long at the, mm. that high level but again 
uh, we we got to come for him as well. So you yeah. know, you you got to say it because you know you can't see these guys as anyone you know on a on a pedestal anymore. They're on yeah. the same level as you. So I, I love it because it's like you can see that you guys are like froth it. You're like, yeah, I want to, I want that, and then he loves it. He's like, yeah, fucking like bring it on. So like, I I'm so excited for this year's like Tory and the least um, on the men's side. So hard out. Um, have you got anything else, Ed? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to take it out of CrossFit for a minute. Do you, obviously you've committed quite a bit of your life, um, towards it now, but you did say before that you've been, um, working as well. Is there any, uh, ambitions outside of CrossFit, any careers you wanted to pursue or anything like that? Not now. No. <laughs> like, yeah, like I'm all, I'm all in, like there's, there's nothing else that, um, is going to kind of even take my mind elsewhere. Um, not for the next 10 years, at least, you know, I'm, I'm making a real run at this, um, individual hundred percent first, and then you gotta, you can assess your options down the line. But, um, I think that with the amount of work that I'm putting in and, um, everything, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a one way road and then I can worry about anything else down the line. Um, there's lots of opportunities with opening gyms and, you know, um, moving into the CrossFit space in that way. I think that would be something that I would really look forward to after CrossFit. Um, but yeah, for right now, it's kind of just one goal. Awesome. He's locked in, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that, that's a good clip for a reel. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Prof Gun. Um, sweet. Should we move on to the question? Yeah. Right. You got the question? Yeah. Hey, look, we know um, we wanted to wrap this up around 45, so I think we're doing pretty good on time um but uh, the way we're ending these now previous guest asked the next guest a question so we'll grab your question off camera after this is done but this week's question comes from marnie sykes um phenomenal kiwi team athlete uh, and individual but um i'm gonna throw it to beef because i've forgotten it oh. <laughs> One job, hey. Oh, yeah. I've written it down. So, Marnie would like to know your most embarrassing moment ever. Oh, I can go pretty funny with this. Go. Send it. All right. So, um, it's kind of just a stupid kid decision, isn't it? So, when I was like 19, basically, so like there was, it, was, uh, it was New Year's Eve and it was like a big festival here in Perth. Um, but basically, um, I ended up for New Year's Eve uh, in the police lockup. <laughs> oh no! So, What's going uh, on? Uh, I got 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 a little bit too got a little bit too rowdy with the boys at pre's and didn't get let in. Um, and then got a move on notice and didn't move on and kept coming back. And <laughs> eventually, the the cop said, "Nah, that's enough. We're going to lock you up for the night." So <laughs> it was a it was a good 17 hours in little in hold up and then <laughs> got out the next day at about three o'clock. So Zane yeah, in the I cells. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, man. But you know, I've, that's past life, but you live and you learn. It's pretty funny oh, now that you look back on it. It's a good story. 17 hours sobering up. Oh, fuck that. Oh, it's crazy, man. I remember like the first, the first three hours probably got locked up at like nine or 10 o'clock. And then I asked the guy what the time was and he goes, yeah, it's midnight. I was like, Fuck, I'm in, I'm in the police hold up on New Year's Eve, and all my friends are out having fun. That's terrible. Were you on your own, or was there others in there? I had like an old guy who'd been to jail like heaps, and then I had a young guy who was like on his way to going to jail heaps. So it was crazy. But they were both. They'll tell me just calm down. It's fine. Like it's all good. And I'm like, it's not all good. <laughs> but you know, it's funny now. Are they lifelong friends now? You... <laughs> can't you can't say I remember their names? No. <laughs> so, yeah, They're like, yeah, it's all right, bro. Just pick a spot and just yeah. chill out. <laughs> First time, bro. All good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, like... You learn. Sick, sick. Hey, um, we really appreciate you coming on, having a yarn with us. Uh, before we shoot, is there anyone you want to give a quick shout out? Oh, probably just, it's the obvious one, but yeah, Gracie, um, I think it's going to be a massive year for her. i um, super excited. People didn't speak about her. I probably didn't realize how close she was last year to the games. And I think people are going to learn some things this year that um, they probably didn't know last year. Um, but then also my parents, they're super, super supportive of everything I do. Um, you know, without them, nothing, none of this would be possible either. So yeah, I think those two. How good. Hell of a shout out. And I think, um, it's worth noticing as well, like the reason we do this podcast is to put you guys on the map 
uh, no one's talking about, you know, Zane Healy, but like we're seeing it <laughs> and fucking look out because you're going to do some damage. Like we, we're privileged. We get to see it. We're on this side of the world and we're aware the other side of the world, just America really, uh, is pretty like, you know, focused on the same 10 people that have been the America. last five years, <laughs> yeah. you know, so you know and it's cool to be able to see what you're doing as well mate so um yeah i'm foreseeing the next the next few years you're going to be up there you know pushing them and 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 making a name for yourself so we're excited to see that too mate. but yeah um, looking forward to it yeah anyway should we um wrap it up there thanks heaps for your time no worries thanks guys very much appreciate it no worries cool anyway we'll get that camera off We'll get that question off camera, but for now, we'll leave it there, eh, boys? See you, team. Easy.